Hey y'all, welcome back to the Practical Preppers. Um, we've been working, like I said, we're trying to put a, uh, an inventory list together, a spreadsheet together um, of what we want to keep on hand for this six month rotation. Remember we're trying to prepare just to have six months worth of supplies um, on, on hand at all times. So, I've got my laptop here, I've been jotting down notes, and I'm going to go from the notes on here. Um, this is my laptop I use, that's what I use for editing video on. Um, so, what I'm going to talk about are what, to me, are my top 12 items. This is what I'm going to start with, and, and uh, as far as food goes. Now, I meant to bring those in here, and I forgot them, but Gail, through her Kroger's card and Kroger's thing, they have these Friday deals, and she got five big tubes of uh, toothpaste for like a dollar a piece, something like that. Um, so she bought all five of those, and those go in our store, you know, in our stockpile, to be rotated out, you know, as we use a tube, we'll buy a tube. You know, unless we find another deal on some. Um, so, that's how I'm approaching trying to get my pantry stocked for six months. Um, so, these are the things that I consider what I'm going to be concentrating on the most looking for sales, looking for specials on them, looking for ways of storing it. And these are all going to go into my six-month rotation. Uh, that's the key to it, rotating the stock. Um, the most common of survival foods are beans. Um, they're cheap. There's plenty of them out there. And... They provide a lot of protein. Um, protein that is going to be kind of hard to find without meats. Um, so beans are definitely a, a very good uh, prepper food to stock. And you don't need tons of it. You know, the, the, the biggest problem with beans, I mean, I love beans. But they do take a long time to cook, and we've got to think about our cooking situations. Now, and we can't, you know, beans taste great the next day or the day after. You take them out of the refrigerator, heat them up, you know, they taste really good. We're not going to have refrigeration if we suffer a, a, a disruption of the power grid. So we won't be baking a big pot, the smaller pots, you know. But my number one item is beans. My number two item, the perfect companion to beans, is white rice. Uh, you don't want the brown rice because they have oils in them and they'll spoil. Um, but the white rice, uh, it's an excellent source of carbohydrates. And it stores for long periods of time. So you don't have to worry about that. You know, again, we figure out, say we're going to have rice for two meals a week. Rice will be a part of it. Um, or three, you know, we're still working on our menu. I want to try to do a one-month menu. And in that I can repeat every month for six months and have, you know, figure out what all I need. So it's a work in progress, you know. I mean, prices are about to really start going up, so we need to start stocking some stuff now that we know about. Um, so beans, white rice canned vegetables. They, they're good well past their, you know, freshest date. They might not be as fresh, but they're not going to be bad. Um, and they have a lot of, of micronutrients that would be good to have during a, a survival type situation. So canned vegetables. Find them on sale, grab a bunch. Put them in the rotation. That's all you have to do, keep rotating them, because you eat vegetables every day, hopefully. Um, canned meats. 
Now, we would, it, it's going to be difficult with that in that we don't use canned meats. So it's going to be hard to do work in the rotation, but we will start using it for some things and experimenting with canned meats. Uh, that's a part of this because whether it tastes good or not, when you're in a situation where you, you, you know, a catastrophic event has happened and you're trying to survive, taste is not as important as it is today. Um, so we will experiment with different ways, you know, canned tuna, making tuna salad, chicken, same thing, you know. Uh, so canned meats is one. Something to look at. Um, I'm going to also stock some canned fruits uh, for the sugars, you know, just for something sweet every now and then. Um, and like the canned vegetables, they'll, they'll last well past the sell by date things. Um, so, you know, your canned vegetables, your canned meats, and your canned fruits. So those are the canned items you want to grab. Honey. Honey lasts forever. Real honey. So that's going to be something we stock up on. It's great sweetener for things. I mean, just honey. And plenty of honey we'll have on hand. <coughs> um, going down my list, spaghetti sauce and pastas, jars and jars of spaghetti sauce and packages and packages of pasta. Um, that's good, you know, two nights a week, <laughs> you know, you, you can get a variety of spaghetti sauces, um, just a good, quick, eat up meal and you can eat and it's almost like to some people comfort food um, especially for kids who doesn't like spaghetti you know so uh, spaghetti sauce and pasta products another good one peanut butter peanut butter lasts a long time it's a very good source of proteins and it's another comfort food especially for the kids um, you know, stockpile jelly to go with it. So, you know, you always have that. I mean, that goes into your rotation. We eat peanut butter and jelly when it's just me and Jail or me and Gail. Um, I like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I take them to lunch, you know. So, peanut butter and jelly will be one of the things that we start getting a six-month supply of. Um... Wheat flour, yeast, baking soda, and baking powder. I'm doing that all in one. Um, because you're not going to be able to go buy fresh bread anywhere. You need to have a means to be able to bake some bread. Um, and those are supplies. Get some glass jars at, you know, the dollar store or Walmart. I'm going to get glass jars. Um, and you can... You know, it doesn't take a lot of yeast, it doesn't take a lot of baking soda or baking powder to make a lot of bread. Flour, yes. But, um, we use flour in a lot of things, so that's going to rotate. That stock that will rotate and it'll get used up. Um, and finally, water. Water is really important. Um, um. They, they say a gallon per day per person, plus a gallon per day for sanitary reasons per person. So, you know, you want a couple of gallons a day per person. Just think about it that way. Now, you'll be able to, there will be supplemented with rainwater and, you know, have water purification, you know, tablets or straws or whatever for drinking water. If you need it, you know, we're, we're, we always have that available to us. Uh, rainwater, we're going to set up for our garden anyway. So, uh, those are the things I'm thinking about. Now, I would really like to hear what you guys think about my list. This list is for me, 
what I want to stock, what you want to stock may be completely different. And I may be trying to stock something I shouldn't that I don't know that I shouldn't. Uh, you know, we could talk about it. We could all. Uh, uh, Why are you listening to me? I don't know if you heard that or not. My phone just said I didn't understand that. Why is my phone listening to me? That's bizarre. Huh. Anyway. <laughs> My folk didn't understand me. I hope you all did. Uh, anyway, that's my list of my top 12 items that I think we need, you know, Gail and I are going to concentrate on stocking up on um, for food. That's our basics, our staples. As long as we get that, we can eat a nice variety of food. We can bake some bread. Um... I, hopefully I can keep the chickens, uh, you know, so we'll have a supply of eggs, and I don't know what else to do. I don't know what else to get. There will be other things as we go along, because, you know, we have to think about, you know, like candles and kerosene lamps and, you know, things like that we're going to be getting into as well, so that we can sustain ourselves if we have to shelter in place for a few months we'll be able to do that. Uh, and it, it's not just in case something happens, but it's also a hedge against the economy. Um, when we have these crises like, you know, the flooding and everything where we know they're looking for an excuse to jack up prices, we'll be able to absorb some of that a little bit better. Uh, and again, if we lose our job or we have a disruption on our job, we get hurt or something, We'll be able to um, still continue to eat. You know, we might not have the $100, $150 a week to spend at the grocery store every week. But we will have so much food stocked up already, we don't have to. And during that time, you know, before we get back to work or find another job or whatever it may be, we're going to have plenty here to help us along. Um, but again... Keep your eyes open for deals. Look for bargains. Look online. Um, join these clubs. I mean, Kmart, we get all kinds of, or not Kmart, Kroger's. We get all kinds, Gail gets all kinds of good stuff uh, that we get from Kroger's because she's up, not to mention, you know, every month I get to fill up the truck and at least four or five, you know, five gallon containers of gas at a dollar off, whatever the price is at the time. So there are benefits to things like that as well. But uh, again, my 12 items. Let me hear what your 12 items are. Give me, you know, if you have a YouTube channel and you want to get in on this, you know, do a video. Uh, show your 12 items. You know, let's build on this. Um, let me know what I'm missing out on, what I didn't think about in my 12 items. Uh, but those, I can live for a long time with those items, right, you know, as a, a, a survival thing and to at least have variety in what I'm eating for a few months without having to make a run to a grocery store. So, I hope you like that. I hope you appreciate that list. Let me know what you think about it. Um... If you want to be part of this, I'm still working on the Facebook page because I don't know how to do it yet. I've, I've got people I've invited. Uh, anybody wants to be invited, leave me, you know, uh, send me an email. My email is on the about thing here or send me a friend request on Facebook and let me know you want to join. I'll add you as a friend that I can invite you into the uh, group and you can help me build it and help me get it together. And I'll be putting our lists out on there, recipes we can share out there, you know, ideas for how to cook things without electricity, you know, just continually build and gain knowledge and, and experience, you know, with all of us working together. Um, 
So I think that's going to be a good thing. My 12 items. Let me know what your 12 items are. Let's, uh, you know, want to be a part of this, subscribe, like this video, comment on it. You know, share it. Share it with your friends. Uh, they might want to become a part of this and, and have input that they can give us and, and they can gain knowledge from us. Your family members could, you know, gain, you know, from this. We could all build each other's confidences up as well um, by working together. So that's what I'm looking for. And, again, hope you liked it. I'll be working on the next one. And this is Wednesday, April 3rd. I am about 56 days away from retirement. <laughs> uh, and once I retire in 56 days on May 29th, uh, I'll be able to dedicate a lot more time to doing videos, running this stuff, and keeping everything organized. And, you know, we can really turn it into something. I'll have people helping me then. And uh, we're really going to make this grow. This is Joe with St. Bernard Acres, and this is Practical Preppers. I'm out.